leave it to Frank Saravelli to go out there and start the conversation once again. As yesterday, he had himself an article published on DailyFaceOff.com that I thought was so in-depth, so good, and just something that's really worth your time in general, that I wanted to make this video today about an Edmonton Oilers forward that is being discussed in trades. Let's head over to the 2016 NHL Draft and talk about that fourth overall pick, the ever so elusive supposed to be the Curry to McDavid's Gretzky. Let's talk today about Jesse Pugliarvi. Now, we've made a lot of videos over the past few months, heck, even the past few years, talking about Pugliarvi and whether or not he's going to get traded, where he's going to go to, whether or not some other team could try to capitalize on the potential and the profile and the build that he has. But at the end of the day, at least at the time of recording this audio, Pugliarvi is still an oiler after all of these rumors that have circulated around the past few years. However, with this being the last year of a one-year $3 million AAV contract and with Pugliarvi as an RFA expiring to be, there is a lot of conversation as to where this guy is going to go next. And this is why Saravelli published this article, which I wanted to showcase here on the channel today, which team will try to unlock Pugliarvi's potential at the trade deadline. Link will be in the description below if you want to go ahead and read this article yourself. It's a very good one to go out there and consume because it kind of has everything. I'm just going to go out there and read the individual headlines, not even read the article, but just the headlines here. There is the profile for Polyarvi. There's the archetype and the ideal role that you have for this guy. There's a scouting report. There's a buyer beware part. There's a potential fits part. There's comparable trade returns too. Sarah Ville goes all out. This is a crazy good article, and you should go out there and read this if you have the chance. But if you go over and just skim the piece, the article talks about a lot of the same things we have talked about before. Pugliarvi is 24 years old, 6'4", 201, a right-handed guy, as we said, signed till the end of this season, making $3 million on the dot. He's got 10 points in 49 games played at the time of recording this audio. He is on pace for 17 points in 81 games. That would be a pretty steep drop-off from all the production he had had the past few years, especially since returning to the Oilers organization from Finland. Last year, he had a pretty good season, all things considered, 36 points in 65 games played, but as we have said, he's disappeared in the playoffs, and he really has not shown off well this season in terms of his on-ice numbers. Now, we have to say the same thing every time we bring up Pugliarvi, but this is a player who, if you talk about just the raw point totals, you're always going to be a tad disappointed. But when you actually watch the way he plays and you see the reads that he's able to make, the chip passes, and how he's able to break up opponents rushes. He's not a bad hockey player in the slightest. He's definitely not. The problem with Pugliarvi is just when it comes to the expectations versus what you actually get, there's a lot more to be uncovered here, and it's partially why he's been so involved in trade rumors the past few years. Take a look at what Sarah Valley writes is his archetyped and ideal role. He is a third line four checker. When his confidence is intact, Pugliarvi can provide secondary scoring, be an effective four checker, and add to a team's overall speed. But the fourth overall pick is a reclamation project. His confidence appears shattered, and it will require time, teaching, and patience to rehabilitate him into a useful player once again. There also was a scouting report on the entire website here talking about how his wheels fell off and how even though this might be the case, there is potential in there somewhere. Finnish journalist Tommy Seppala wrote an intriguing piece comparing Pugliarvi's numbers to that of longtime NHLer Ole Jokinen, and Pugliarvi's production is more favorable in just about every comparison through the same stages of their careers. Now, of course, we're not going to go out there and say that Pugliarvi is going to be Jokinen, but to his credit, Pugliarvi can fly. His skating is such a positive attribute that with any space, he can be a threat to create opportunities by himself. He also has a decent motor and all this other stuff, which means that he does have the tools, he just kind of needs the toolbox to be able to use it. Buyer beware is his fatal flaw here, his absence of hockey intelligence. He lacks awareness. He has always relied on his natural ability to be successful and has had a tough time figuring out how to fit into an NHL lineup and be productive. There's a whole bunch of other stuff, too, talking about shooting percentage that's pretty low. The fact that he was taken fourth overall is somewhat of a damning quality to his profile because there's so much expectation on that. 
And then this is where things get interesting. The potential fits part of the article talks about how a little more than two weeks ago, before Yamamoto's injury sent him to the LTIR, Ken Holland sent a note to all 31 teams advising them that Poliarvi is indeed available. Yamamoto is eligible to return on February 12th. Provided that there are no other injuries, the Oilers will need to either trade Poliarvi or waive somebody else in order to become cap compliant. Here's the first team listed, the Florida Panthers. Back in his day as an NHL agent, Panthers GM Bill Zito's partner was Pugliarvi's current agent, Marcus Leto. Zito spent a chunk of time working in Finland, and thus, it stands to reason that he might be able to glean some insider knowledge on the player and take a flyer. The St. Louis Blues were one of the teams that responded to Edmondson's inquiry about Pugliarvi. The belief is they were willing to roll the dice with Pugliarvi for the rest of the season to see if they could rehab his game a bit, sending back another project player or pending UFA the other way. The final team listed here is the Tampa Bay Lightning. This choice might surprise some, but the Lightning are the best in the business in development. They like to take swings and buy distressed assets such as Philip Myers from Nashville. If anyone can carve out a role for a fast, hardworking player, it's the Lightning. The cost would essentially be free, and Pugliarvi can be re-signed for relative pennies compared to what he is earning now. There then is a conversation about salary dump situations, there's the Blackhawks, the Sabres, Ducks, Coyotes, Canadians, and Blue Jackets, but realistically, these three teams, Florida, St. Louis, and Tampa Bay, are the ones that I wanted to focus on the most, because the way Sarah Valley writes about it here, how some of these teams were the teams that wanted him, like St. Louis, for example, just thinking about what Pugliarvi could do alongside of some of those other players, it really intrigues me as to the direction of the Blues in general, because that's a team that might go out there and sell a whole bunch of their own assets as well. So, depending on what else the Blues end up doing, it could be a pretty interesting sort of retool on the fly type of scenario, seeing them take advantage of a guy like Pugliarvi, who has definitely fallen out of favor due to his time in Edmonton. As for returns, I mean, Saravelli ends up writing about two comparable trade returns. One was the Stillman-Chicago-Vancouver trade, the other was the Ole Olevi-Florida-Vancouver trade, so yeah, you got two Vancouver Canucks trades in there. Thanks, Frank Saravelli. There are two recent examples of this type of player that have been dealt that could work out for Edmonton. Dickinson was a pure salary dump, but the Canucks are paying a second-round pick to move off him, but he had almost two full seasons of $2.65 million remaining at the time of the trade. Olevi, a little bit of a different situation, he was also taken in this one. 2016 draft, and this was another change of scenery type deal, we don't get any sense that Edmondson is interested in taking on another project, instead looking for a player who can contribute now. So, for Tampa Bay, I'm not too sure if they're going to be too willing to go out there and spend one of their own forwards that is an NHL caliber guy right now, mostly because, you know, they're going into the playoffs and they want to do some damage once again. St. Louis might be in a strange position considering the guys are going to be ending off selling, and the Florida Panthers, I mean, there's a connection there for sure, but I am kind of intrigued as to seeing what exactly their direction is going to be too, because the Panthers are kind of a bubble-ish team. They haven't really been all too great so far, so maybe a trade like this could be a pretty good catalyst for some good development for the rest of their guys. But of course, this isn't guaranteed, it's just kind of speculation, so I will leave a link in the description if you want to go ahead and read the rest of the article. There was a lot in there that we didn't talk about here because it's a very good piece and it's very in-depth, but if you're a fan of either the Blues, the Panthers, or the Lightning, what are your thoughts on the idea of acquiring Jesse Pugliarvi from the Oilers? What is the max that you would be willing to give Edmonton in some sort of a trade like this? And if you are an Oilers fan, what are your thoughts of any sort of return from either of these three teams? Is there a prospect in particular that you like more than others? Is there a pick that you're eyeing instead? Do you want to take advantage of either of these teams that are kind of on the outside of the playoff picture looking in like Florida? for example. Would you be interested in the first round pick, or do you even think that's feasible? Thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.